in this video, we'll consider the GNM estimation of the consumption capital as a pricing model. We consider a setting that is very similar to classic paper by Hansen and Singleton in Econometrica 1982. The idea is to consider a representative agent that maximizes discounted lifetime utility su subject to some budget constraint. So specifically, the, the agent is interested in maximizing the expected discounted utility of consumption for all future time points. Here, the delta is a discount factor, u is a utility function, and ct denotes consumption at time t. And note here that the expectation is taken conditional on some information set at time t. The budget constraint is given by this uh, equation down here, where AT denotes financial wealth, uh, YT denotes income, DT again is consumption, and RT plus one is the return on uh, financial wealth. In order to maximize this expected utility, uh, we obtain a first order condition given by a so-called Euler equation given in, in this formula here where this prime here denotes the derivative of the utility function and note here that capital RT plus 1 is 1 plus RT plus 1 and this is the so-called return factor for financial wealth. So what we want to do is that we want to estimate this discount factor and potentially also some parameters contained in the utility function. In order to do so, we, we need to put on some additional structure on, on the utility function. We consider a, a very simple example. In, in particular, we consider a utility function for so-called constant relative risk aversion, CRRA, um, that is given by, by this function here, where gamma is the coefficient of relative risk aversion. Given this particular choice of utility function, we end up having this following Euler equation here. Note that typically in, in time series analysis, we would find that the consumption over time is, is a non-stationary uh, process. So in order to impose stationarity, we may consider the growth rate instead. So what we do is that we divide by ct to the power of minus gamma in, in this formula here and obtain the following equation. The point is that, that the, the, the series rt plus 1 and the series ct plus 1 divided by ct are both stationary and, uh, and hence should be able to, to use the, the theory for GMM estimation in order to carry out a valid inference here. And then what we want to estimate is this discount factor delta and the coefficient of relative risk aversion gamma. Note that this question here is a conditional moment condition where we, have, uh, where we are conditioning on the information set at, at time t. But as we have seen before, we can rewrite this into unconditional moment conditions. So the idea is to consider some instruments set t, so here set t is a vector, and um, these instruments, given that they are included in, in the information set, they should be orthogonal to, to what is inside this conditional expectation here. So, so our unconditional moment conditions are given by, by this formula here, and we have this function g of the model parameters. Note that we have two parameters to estimate, so we need at least two moment conditions. We start out by considering the case where we have three instruments and hence uh, three moment conditions. We choose set t to include a constant and then the lag growth in consumption and the lag uh, return factor on financial wealth. So we have that set T is three-dimensional, and then, then we have the model variables W, T, 
that are given by the uh, the growth rate in consumption and the return factor time t plus one. We can then write down explicitly what are the the moment conditions that should be be satisfied for for this particular choice of uh, instrument vector z t. Let us try to estimate delta and gamma in optometrics. So we have this data set called HS, and it is included in the zip file uh, with the installation file for the GMM uh, module for optometrics. An outline of how to estimate the GMM module can be found in the lecture notes. Let us first consider the, the two series. So we have C and R. C is cor corresponds to uh, CT plus one divided by CT, so the, the growth in consumption, and R is the corresponds to RT plus one. We can try to, to plot the two series. And they look like this. And so they they seem to be stationary. To be a bit more specific, the C series here is the uh, real uh, consumption growth in the US, and R is the real return on stocks. We have data from March 1959 until December 1978. Now, let us try to, to estimate the model parameters. Recall here that we have the two model variables that are given by the growth in consumption and the, the return factor R, and then we have the three instruments given by the constant, the lagged growth in consumption and the lagged return factor. What we do is that we choose this ox pack and then we use the GMM package. Then we choose C and R to be the model variables. So this, this is a WT vector. Then we should have a constant that should be an instrument. And then we should have the lag growth in consumption and the lag return factor as instruments as well. And then we have a lot of options on how to estimate the, the model per parameters. So we could consider a one-step GMM estimator or two-step GMM estimator or this iterated GMM or the continuously updated GMM. Let us just start out with the two-step efficient GMM. We can choose different weight matrices here. So we can assume that the sample moments are uh, independent and identically distributed over time. We can allow for heteroscedasticity and we can allow for both heteroscedasticity and autocorrelation in the moments. So let us just choose the heteroscedastic case. We can also specify some other settings, which we, which we'll not get into here. Yes, so I think we can just continue here. Choose the the full sample, and then we have this window where we have to specify the moment conditions. The default setting here is for IV estimators of uh, linear regression models. Note here, in, in our case, we do not have a linear regression model. We have a, a, a non-linear problem, and we, we have to manually insert the, the moment conditions. The moment conditions can be stated by two, these two uh, lines here. Note here that we have two model variables, the ones we have specified. So, Y0 corresponds to the growth in consumption and Y1 corresponds to the return factor. Then we have three instruments, Z0 up to Z2, that are given respectively by a constant, the lagged consumption growth, and the lagged return factor. 
The first line here corresponds to this u function from the slides. So here the u function is given by delta times the growth in consumption to the power of minus delta times the return factor minus one. And as you can see here, we have the delta. So note here, if we, if we write some variable in curly brackets, this corresponds to a parameter. So we, we are declaring implicitly a parameter named delta uh, by this factor here. Then we have uh, y0, which corresponds to the growth rate in consumption. And then we take it to the power of minus gamma. And again here, gamma is in curly brackets. So this is a, an additional parameter. And then everything is uh, here is multiplied by y1, which corresponds to the return factor. And then we subtract minus one. So the first equation here corresponds to the u function. And then this is actually a vector. So it, it, it stacks the u function for all time points. The second equation here essentially corresponds to um, the, the u function multiplied by the vector of instruments. Again, everything here is written on matrix form. And that is why it, it looks uh, like this. So here we have the u function multiplied by set t. So this essentially corresponds to what is inside of the expectation here. And where set t uh, includes the constant, it includes the lag consumption growth and the lag return factor. So we get uh, this estimation output here. We get some estimate of the uh, delta coefficient and some estimate of the gamma coefficient and uh, the associated standard errors and, and t values. It specifies that we have used the, the heteroskedasticity consistent estimator for uh, the, the weight matrices that we have used uh, two-step efficient GMM, the number of parameters, the number of moment conditions, the, the value of the criterion function that we have minimized in order to, to find the GMM estimator. And it also reports the day statistic for over identification. We have an estimate of delta that is very close to one with a very low standard error. On the other hand, we have an estimate of gamma, which is around 0.90, which is within what we expect from, from the theory and, and from the model constraints in the sense that we have, um, that, that in the sense that gamma is, is less than one. On the other hand, we, we see that the standard error is enormous. So this reflects that gamma is estimated very impre imprecisely for, for this uh, sample here. We could um, try to check the robustness of, uh, of this result here. So what we could do is to consider a weight matrix based on the uh, autocorrelation and heteroskedasticity consistent estimator, we could consider um, iterated GMM. And we could also try to include uh, additional instruments. So we could choose instruments of uh, lag order two instead of only having lag order once. I, I try to summarize the, the additional results in the uh, in this table here. What we see is that, that no matter what choice of estimation approach that we use, no matter what type of weight matrix that we choose, and no matter what choice of lag order of the instruments that we choose, we, we get essentially that the, the discount factor is very close to one. And the coefficient of relative risk aversion, the, the gamma coefficient is uh, all over the place and estimated very imprecisely. We also note that 
that the Hansen test for uh, over identification is not rejected in, in any of the settings here. So it's suggesting that the, the moment conditions are, are valid. Uh, even though that the moment conditions appear to be to be valid, the, we have that that the gamma parameter is uh, poorly identified empirically. There are several several explanations for this. It could be that the instruments are weak, and it could also be that the the model is is simply wrong. And there exists some literature on how to to modify the model. The the last potential explanation is that there is very little variation in the data. In particular, we can see that the C variable and the R variables do not vary that much over, over the sample and they are actually very close to one. But this has some implications on the moment conditions. In particular, note here that, that, that delta is found to be very close to one. Moreover, suppose that, that both this CT plus one, one over CT is, is close to one and RT plus one, is close to one, then we essentially have that the moment conditions here hold no matter what the value of gamma is, because we essentially have one minus one, no matter what value gamma zero has. So it means that, that these moment conditions are satisfied irrespectively of the value of, of gamma, suggesting that um, gamma is poorly identified empirically.